Okay, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. This uh, is the first recording of a new show called Between Two Birds. I'm your host, Brad Gamble, uh, of Team TSB for 2014. Uh, we did uh, a great 24 hours of birding back in May uh, here in Ohio. We recorded uh, 120 different species either seen or heard within a 24-hour period by at least two of the three members in our team. So, way to go Team Snowbunting. Uh, this is the video portion of our blog. Uh, again, the blog's website is no time left to gamble dot blogspot dot com and that's spelled G-A-M-B-I-L-L. -L. Uh, we have a special guest with us here today. Uh, the ABA legend of ABA fame of the 800-800 club, meaning she has traveled and seen over 800 birds for both the ABA area here in America as well as 800 species in Mexico. Uh, she, her and her husband, Red, are one of the few couples that have ever seen over 800 apiece. I'd like to welcome Louise Gamble to the show. Say Thank hello. You. Hello. Thank you. So Louise, this one to kind of ask you some questions about birding and all the examples of the gamble history that we've done, places we've traveled. Um, you retired back in 1986, and uh, you want to mention about uh, Red making a list of the states that we want you need to visit in the mm -hmm. birds. When he retired, he said that uh, he wanted he was a birder, and that he wanted to uh, check what states he needed, and we wanted to do all 50 states after he retired. So you made a list of the 50, 50 states, states and, we and marked, which ones you hadn't spent to. Which ones we needed and we hit the road. Yeah, <laughs> and then you got a chance to see some birds in those states as well yes. then. That was uh -huh. kind of it. That's um, and and that led you, time. okay, and then that led you down to the, re, le, the lower Rio Grande Valley in Texas. Mm -hmm. So what kind of pointed you in that direction and wanted you to stay in the winter down there? Uh, we just wanted to get out of the cold weather for some reason. <laughs> That's true, that's true. It's a good place to go. Um, it's the lower Rio Grande Valley. And we um, ran into a lot of birders when we got down there, so we thought, well, that's where we need to be. Great. Yeah, that's a great place, a lot of birders. What's, uh, what was your favorite daily bird that was either seen in the Rio Grande Valley? Something that wasn't an exotic, but something that you saw? Um, I love the hummingbirds, and nice. I saw those every day. That would be what the buff bellied, mm -hmm. and we got, we got three different ones. And uh, the buff bellied and the black fingers. chin. Mm -hmm. Coming to my favorite. Um, what time as a family do you remember growing up? Uh, as a family, us birding. What time as a family do you remember most about birding? As in, like the scenery or specific bird or place, something that maybe the four of us, me, Buddy, and, and Red, Red Pop, and you. Mm -hmm. um, like we went to Manitoba. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about up there, in Manitoba? So many different birds that I had never seen before. I had to start writing on paper and make sure I didn't forget which ones we had seen. Yeah. So, yeah, in 1985 we went to Manitoba, Canada, Lake Hudson, and the, the four of us, me, my grandparents, and my father, and um, we saw several birds and mammals, including uh, great gray owl, and also the northern shrike and the Ross's gall, Ross's gall. the real pretty Ross's, pink Ross's gall, as well as uh, polar bears. That was my first chance to see polar bears, and that was in 85, and the four just went there on a whim and uh, with no leaders to start south. Um, how did Buddy get you into birding? He was a school teacher, and um, he come running in the house. Uh, I live close to the school where he uh, was teaching, and he came running in the house and run out real quick to the backyard and come back. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm feeding the birds to get birds to come in my yard. And that was kind I of... I thought he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all began. <laughs> um, and then when you were down in Texas, I know you did some volunteering and leader. Yes. Uh, group bird walking leaders. Um, you recently you did one with Jimmy Carter back then. Him and his yes, wife. Yes. Uh huh. Um, you want to say a little bit about that? Any trip that they liked or bird they questioned? Oh, the only thing that that stuck with me was we was showing President Carter uh, some birds, and uh, I forget now what the bird was that we showed him, and he said uh, uh, made some remark about it. 
well, was it going to be there all night? And I said, no, <laughs> it, will, it will disappear when it gets dark and go to roost. And uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, and they were really into birding, so mm -hmm. him and his wife came down the valley and Red and Louise got the chance to, to share some of the unique yeah. valley birds. Yeah. They asked if I would take him around so he could uh, get some get some birds. Yeah. All right, and then uh, one of our last questions was, uh, you know, birding requires a lot of waking up early. Was there ever a time when, you know, the alarm went off at 4 a.m. and uh, you just rolled over and said, you know what, I'm, I don't feel good or I'm tired today and we're not going to do any birding today? No, I was always awake before my alarm went off because if I knew I had it set, well, I, I would wake up just about time it would uh, take off. So. I got out of bed, so you, got dressed, and hit the road. <laughs> so it's a good. It's fair to say, six to seven days you were out mm -hmm. birding, huh? Yes. All right. All right. Well, that was concludes the video section of this uh, blog for No Time Left to Gamble. Blogspot. Com. Um, we appreciate everything Red Louise has done, and look forward to uh, many more adventures in the future. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>